Hey, so we're at Arbiter Brewing Company in Minneapolis. This will be our first video for the channel. So we're pretty excited about this. Right, Rachel? Yep. Uh, so Arbiter is pretty new. Uh, they just opened up this year. The earliest article I could find of them uh, working to open up the brewery was back in January 2018. So they've been at this for a while. And this space used to be the old Harriet Brewing, which closed in January of 2017. Uh, Longtime Minneapolis brewery goers. Uh, this is a familiar space uh, with a new face, though. So let's see how this goes. So we're recording this in our apartment because uh, the audio that we recorded in our car just after leaving our biter was unusable. Uh, and then also we kind of thought, I kind of saw us like talking in the tap room about what we think about the tap room, what we think about the beers. But then as we like sat down, I just kind of like looked around and it was like, it was pretty busy, but it was very loud inside. I quickly realized that that was not a reality that was going to happen, which I mean, part of it was just the fact that there was a lot of people inside, but also like some breweries just do not invest in sound absorption, uh, which we kind of saw at our biter. It's not a big deal. It's kind of makes things a bit nicer if you do do that, but uh, it's not like a deal breaker kind of thing. Uh, so, I mean, kind of previewing our overall thoughts on the brewery, that's literally my only complaint is there's no sound absorption within the tap room. So kind of touching more on what I brought up earlier about our Biter and Harriet Brewing, uh, just for some extra additional uh, context and background. Harriet was the first tap room in Minneapolis. Just due to the, the laws surrounding breweries in Minnesota, there was no tap rooms up until Surly got the law changed. And I should have double checked this, but I believe 2009. Uh, so Lift Bridge was actually the first tap room in Minnesota uh, shortly before Harriet opened in Minneapolis. And they were open for six years in the same spot as our buyer uh, up until like, January, they closed in January 2017. Um, so it was kind of a staple to the Minneapolis beer scene, uh, also a staple to just like South Minneapolis itself, especially. I think even though Venn Brewing, which was, which is probably about half a mile or so south of our biter, uh, I do think that felt like a missing part of the neighborhood to some people. Uh, yeah, just kind of like, I guess thoughts on the tap room was, uh, very colorful. Um, they had some really nice murals. There's two different like large murals that uh, they have in the tap room and they're both beautiful. They had an upstairs area that we drank in that kind of was a little bit away from all the noise uh, on top of just having a bunch of different seats and then also some rail seating over kind of uh, off near the brew house. And they had a garage door opened up to a patio area which may or may not be temporary. Um, they just kind of had some uh, pop-up fencing over there. So I don't know if that's going to always be patio scene or not. Because it also looked like it would normally be part of the parking lot. 
so the beers that we had, uh, one of the first ones we had was uh, West Coast uh, IPA, which they coined as a Bavarian IPA. It was a kind of American or West Coast IPA with all Bavarian ingredients. Uh, it kind of came off as, and I mean this in the best way possible, but like an over hoppy pilsner. That's also kind of a bit higher in ABV because uh, I think it was around the seven percent range. Mm-hmm. And then it just kind of had all those like floral, like a bit fruity, but not super fruity hop characteristics, so that you are familiar with noble hops. Uh, very crisp, but probably not as crisp as the next one of the other ones that we had there, uh, which was called Hoop Jump. Uh, which was a cold IPA collaboration with Bad Habit Brewing out of St. Joseph, Minnesota. And the cold IPA was something that we've never had before. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, it's actually the first cold IPA for Minnesota. Um, so the cold IPA, a little background on that because it's a newer thing. It was kind of coined, at least the term uh, was coined by uh, Wayfinder out of, I believe, Portland. Uh, it's just kind of a... IPA, but made with a lager yeast, uh, usually rice or corn adjuncts, and it's higher ABV than an IPL, so and then it's fermented at cooler temperatures like a lager. So the idea that Wayfinder said is they want to make a West Coast IPA that's Western than West Coast. So it's crispier, clean, and very defined uh, fruit aromas from the hops, and that really came through on this one. We like I got some really like clear like melon and lime aromas off of it, and it was just really crisp. The body didn't really feel like eight percent alcohol, uh, and it wasn't like overly boozy or anything. Uh, it was really good, really well done. Also, we had drippy uh, Zwickel, which was a Zwickel beer. Uh, really liked that one. It was really crispy, really good lager, and then we also had a vanilla mocha latte stout. It was a very sessionable stout. Mm-hmm. which is really hard to find in Minnesota outside of the winter months. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's something that we've always noticed is the further north you go, the harder it is to find at least sessionable stouts outside of winter months. So really appreciate our biter, like having one on tap. And then one of the other things that was just like, I really enjoyed tapless was very, very diverse. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a, just a huge variety. There was lagers, saisons, Stouts, IPAs, hazy pale ale. There's a beer there for everybody. You're not. It's not one of those places that you go there and half the tap list is IPAs, or half the tap list is just overfruited sours. It's definitely a great place to take a group of people that have different tastes in beers. Uh, so my favorite beer that we had while we were there was the Drippy Zwickel. So lagers overall have become a thing that I've enjoyed more over our time of going to all the different breweries in Minnesota. Part of it is that like since I'm the one that's driving, I always tried to keep it at a more sessional rate. So I usually end up at either like a pale ale or a lager. And that's really increased my appreciation of lagers over the past uh, four years at this point. Although I was a bit duped by the Zwickel because wasn't until after I ordered it that I realized it was 6.9%, but I still really enjoyed it. What was your favorite? Uh, my favorite was the hoop jump. It was just really smooth, really clean. Um, all the different flavor profiles of it really worked well together, so I really liked that one a lot. It was very refreshing and very satisfying. Yeah, so uh, yeah, sorry for the hiccup as far as the video um hopefully there's enough footage one of the things that i kind of struggled with when we were there was i didn't really foresee it ahead of time but due to covid and due to the fact that you're supposed to stay in your seat i it was really hard for me to find time that felt safe or okay to get up and film uh so hopefully i got enough footage where this doesn't feel like hey we're here hey, this is what we thought of it like two seconds later. So I really appreciate everyone who clicked on this video and whatever feedback you have, like send it my way. I I want any and all feedback, whatever, to make the best video I can. Uh, And we're going to keep at it. So thank you. 
thank you for watching that video. If you really liked it, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, and follow me on Instagram.